Welcome, Mata Floinda, to an episode where the sun is shone bonnie on the topmost of the top 40. Come with old Fowley across the borders of your mind to the foreign country of the past and the week ending July 17th, 1978. At number 10, signifying that there were at least 30 less popular and only 9 more popular in this week's top 40, is Eruption's cover of Anne Peebles' I Can't Stand the Rain. Although a British group, they operate under the auspices of Frank Farian, purveyor of first-class Munich-originated Tweeny Disco and Sven Gali behind Boney M. It's stomping great fun as a record and Precious Wilson's vocals were a standout. Eruption had a second number one with a cover of a Neil Sedaka B-side, One Way Ticket, in mid-1979. And those two number ones were their only two chart entries. Number nine is a rare case of a top ten record from the late 1970s that I have no memory of whatsoever. Just One More Night by Yellow Dog. It's pleasant radio for a slightly silly novelty song. A little more bawdy in tone than one might hear from Benny Hill. It's not bad. It's not good. It's number nine. Number eight is the one and only hit for the late, great, much missed Warren Zevon. Werewolves of London. The song performed best on the Australian charts. It didn't even crack the top 20 at home in the US. The song was also apparently incredibly problematic to get down in the studio, even though it's only three chords, using up most of the album's budget until Mick Fleetwood and John McVie were roped in and it all clicked. At seven, long-term viewers here will know how profoundly I respect the talents of Johnny Mathis. Here on Too Much Too Little Too Late, aided by reliable hitmaker Denise Williams, he gives full range to the magnitude of his craft. Williams is a good partner in so much as she highlights through the Mars in her own performance, which is strident and over-emoted, just how sublime Matthews is. Eight weeks into the 19-week run, while not the stuff to thrill a teenage glam rock refugee, once you can appreciate what makes it a great record, you can see it as the great record it is. It's just sad that it took 40 years for that to happen. Number six, a curious record is Love Is In The Air by John Paul Young. As mentioned in TRB 25, John Paul Young was one of the cornerstones of the mighty Albert Records empire with a dozen top 40 hits, and this is probably the best remembered and best loved of them all. A disco-infused boss and over, Vander and Young had come a long way since the roar of a crunch of nascent ACDC. The song went from a moderate chart hit, dim and drifting in memory, to a footnote in the cultural ledger of Australia and it was included on the soundtrack to Baz Luhrmann's film, Strictly Ballroom. A film which, along with Muriel's Wedding, we mentioned in our ABBA retrospective last week, attempted to add a cachet of peculiar glamour to Australian suburban existence. Whatever its merits, for me, it is a record the sheer ubiquity of which tends to render it a little uninteresting, especially compared to what is around the rest of the charts this week. How could we forego a forage through the fields of farinaceous facts of flower and fruit before our eyes? Follow me then through the folds of Fowl's fantastic world of facts. The most hit-bound hit this week was Warm Ride by Graham Bonnet, up 12 spots to 26. A longtime friend of the Bee Gees who gifted him this song, and presumably the backing track they were going to sing to it, Bonnet went on to a storied career. Warm Ride was his last pop hit, as he was chosen to replace Ronnie James Dio in Rainbow, and emerges as one of the few men with something genuinely nice to say about Richie Blackmore, for whom he has nothing but praise. Then singing with the Michael Schenker group, where his services were dispensed with after exposing himself on stage one night in Sheffield, to Alcatraz and to his own group. Fair play to him. Not many guys come back from the old Jim Morrison stunt, but it was metal, it was the 80s, and things got crazy now and then. The biggest dropper this week was another Bee Gees related tune, somewhat more directly in the form of Stayin' Alive, which struts its way down from 27 to 38, magnificent as it was all the while. 
The Emeritus single on the charts was the most under Uriah Heap of Uriah Heap singles, Free Me, currently at 22 weeks, ultimately lasting 28, before slipping out of the top 40. No new songs end the top 40 this week, but looking at the national chart, this week's biggest hit debutante was the bewitching teenage boy heterosexuality confirming wood nymph herself, Kate Bush, with the man with the child in his eyes, which could manage no better than 58. Sitting imperiously atop the US charts this week was another Bee Gees related hit, Shadow Dancing by Andy Gibb, the ill-starred youngest of the Gibb brothers. And sitting astride the UK charts this week was You're the One That I Want by Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta, coming towards the end of a nine-week run there atop. Checking in at number five, the first and biggest of three hits for the band that introduced us to the almost intolerably cool Ray Parker Jr., Jack and Jill, by Radio. Not possessed of the usual red-hot guitar histronics that Parker had become famous for, this concentrates on melody and its super smooth sound to bring considerable charm to the charts and retains those charms simply not by being overplayed, rather coming along now and then like a cool breeze on a hot dry day. The fantastic number four is one of the most unforgettable tunes in the 70s, Macho Man by The Village People. Their second single after San Francisco, You Got Me, which was famous for its indescribably awful video, Macho Man remains a joyful stomp and an integral part of what was on the radio in the 70s. The Village People ran up five top 20 hits and two number ones before their novelty ran out and they devolved into a touring act, appearing in front of 42,000 people at the Australian Rugby League Grand Final in 1991, and also showing a dab hand at good-natured self-parody. In 2020, they performed perhaps the ultimate bridging of the gay-straight political divide when Donald Trump used Macho Man and YMCA at his re-election rallies. At number three, slipping down after a week at the peak is Jerry Rafferty's Baker Street, possibly the most successful song about lawsuits and counter lawsuits ever on the Australian charts. Most famous for its eight bar saxophone break rather than Rafferty's mumbling somnambulant vocal, Baker Street spent a good five months on the charts, fading off in mid-September. Apropos the sax break, the chap who played it, Raphael Randolph, did make a claim to authorship based on his having composed the break in studio. The claim was refuted when Rafferty produced his demo of the record showing him playing that break on the guitar, but it opened up a whole new can of worms when a lawsuit arrived from the estate of minor league American jazzbo Steve Marcus, claiming similarity between the Baker Street passage and his song Half a Heart. I don't know why everyone fusses over the sax break, it's the guitar solo on Baker Street which is spectacular. The English national football team of this week's charts is one of the biggest hits ever in Australia temporarily deposed from number one. You're the one that I want by Olivia Newton-John and some other bloke. First hitting the top on June 24th, it spent two weeks aloft before being toppled, sitting at number two for six weeks. Meanwhile, Macho Man spent four of those weeks at number three, then got back to number one on August 21st, spending a further seven weeks up there and not leaving the top 40 until the beginning of December after seven months of residence. Despite this, it still ranks only 17th on the all-time physical era chart for my hometown, bested, amongst others, by the lesser charting Love Is In The Air. So what record was it that deposed the behemoth of You're The One That I Want and thwarted its attempt at Fernando's 14-week record that held our hearts in thrall for six amazing weeks? Gene, use your revivified might to play us in. It's The Rivers of Babylon by Boney M. Possessors of eight top 40 hits and two number ones, Rasputin being the other. People who are presumably unfamiliar with the soundtrack to The Harder They Come and therefore the Melodian's far superior version bought this in droves and why not? It's perfectly acceptable pop fluff and six weeks at number one in such a keenly competitive field is a highly noteworthy achievement. And on that high note, we close with one of the most fun, joyful, and memorable weeks of our survey so far. 
I can only hope next week will be as much fun. I can't guarantee that, but what I can guarantee is that it will be interesting. And I certainly hope to see you there in the near future, in the past, which is a foreign country.